just switched over to, let's make sure we're on figure eight. All right. Let's see what, let's see how that works. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Better? Much better. All right. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Because we had it on, uh, we had it on all around for when we were shooting videos this weekend. Uh, and I forgot to switch it back to figure eight. So, my bad. Uh, all right. Anywho. Sweet wheat. We're starting with the sweet wheat. Yeah. So, 1792 is usually high rye bourbon, or they call it high rye. They don't actually tell us how much rye is in there. Um, oh, good. The buzz is gone. I'm glad. Yeah. We'll yeah. get it back. We had, ah, got to get that buzz. Yeah. Um, thank you, Steve A, for letting us know. Yeah. I'm sorry you missed all our witty banter from, from the first five minutes yeah it was just bad batman jokes yeah. so not much was missed there's nothing bad about Matt, batman it's debatable no no batman like like as a kid i was like batman's the coolest and i'm like there's something a little wrong with that guy yeah like dick grayson is a much more level-headed superhero it's amazing how being a child soldier helped him get there i know right all that, all that trauma. He had so much trauma, it like reversed. Like when you get the high score in Galaga and it goes back to zero. I didn't know that as a thing about Galaga. <laughs> so that reference was lost on me. Just old timey video games in general. You get the highest score, flips back to zero. Mm. Yeah. So it's like he had so much trauma, he ended up okay. Good for him. Yeah. 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 Anyway, how's the sweet weed? It's sweet. It is quite sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the sweetest thing. I don't know. It's sweet but spicy, but not necessarily in like the way I love from some things. Mm. It's fine. It I, is quite it's very sweet and very I don't know, what is that? Can I taste it again? Yeah, go for it. It's not like cherry, it's more like pink bubblegum or something. Mixed with apple or something like that. I could say maybe like Cinnamon apple with like somehow salt got on there. Oh, that's a good point. It is a little salty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if it's just because like I heard the term rye, but I'm like, it almost tastes like a sweet pickle. There's no rye in that one though. Isn't there? No. Really? No. They replaced all the rye with wheat. That's why it's sweet wheat. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's corn and wheat. And I think they don't actually tell us if there's barley in it, but mm. One can there's something grainy. One can safely assume there's probably some barley in there. Yeah. Probably. Um, well, it's it's fine. Just fine. Yeah. I mean, I like it's a bourbon that's. It tastes more like a watered down version of a sweeter bourbon. Like it's not as sweet as I was expecting for something called sweet wheat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I think interesting about it because. All of these are non-age statement. Well, except for the bottle and bond. Bottle and bond, you know, it's got to be four years. Well, they all have to be four years because they don't have age statements. So, eh. But point being, it does have a lot of that woody spice characteristic. Like, I think that kind of, when you use a new barrel especially, it kind of just reveals the whole thing that rye is not the only way to get, get that spice in there. Yeah. It's also just from that... Super, super heavy oak taste. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's very okay. It's very okay. I don't know. I, I think it's a little thin tasting, though. That's why it tastes like a watered down thing, yeah. 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 Not not quite as kick-ass as it could be. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, what is this, what is this bottle that? 45 1792. 1792. 45.6. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. I'm glad we have so much of it here now. Yeah, all in 1792. I think we need to get we need to have a party and give some of this away. Yeah, but I hate people. You don't hate all people. A lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. Well, what percentage would you say of of people do you hate? Ninety eight. Ninety eight percent, like of the just the general population. Probably. <laughs> but luckily, all of you, our lovely viewers, are in the last two percent. Eh. Eh. <laughs> It's fine because they are not physically in our home. Like, 
when more people enter my space, I'm just like, I am so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deal I... with you people. <laughs> Please leave. Yeah. I have certain comfort knowing I could just walk out of here right now and take a nap. That is that is true. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. All right, let's compare that to a little bit of the small batch. Okay. Now, this is an, actually an interesting small batch because this is a two-barrel blend from my employer over at Ray's Liquor. You probably you can't see, see the that. Sticker. You can't see the sticker at all. Yeah. It's I mean, a two you can barrel see it blend. exists, but you can't read the sticker. Yeah, this is, this is their own... This was a special two barrel blend. And I found out, I found out today, these little gold stickers, we actually have no control of, over what they say. Huh. All we do is we, we like hand select this from the samples, right? And yeah. then we send them a logo to the whatever place in Kentucky prints stickers. And then they just, they just print them. And we don't have any choice about what it says. Because some customer came in today and was like, it, this is single barrel select and it's a two barrel blend. It's like, we don't have any control, man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, are these readily available near you? I've only been able to find a small batch. Uh, more or less. At my store, anyway. Raise. Um, we only got like six bottles of the foolproof in. The bottled in bond was a single barrel select. So, But that's relatively common. And the sweet wheat, we got like three in. And I stole one. I didn't steal it. I bought it. Said the thief. I bought it at a very, very discounted price. <laughs> five finger discount. Yeah, five finger discount. Um, and Steve, yes, I did get Erica a ticket for Distill America this year. Hey, sweetie, you're going to Distill America this year. Did not know that. Yeah. When is Distill America? February 22nd. What if I'm out of town? Too bad. You're going to Distill America. One way or another. I, why would you be out of town? I don't know. Well, you're not. Stuff that's you out are going to be out of town because you're going to Madison for Distill America. Okay. I guess I'm going to Distill America. <laughs> um, I like this more. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is this one is so much nice and fuller and richer. Yeah. It's still not as sweet as I thought it was going to be, but no, it's, it's not as thin. There's something. I kind of wish we had two glasses. I'm like, there's something interesting in there I can't pick out. Like, it's a familiar sweetness. It reminds me of, like, grape Laffy Taffy. I think that's it. Yeah. Like, artificial grape flavor. Artificial grape flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a weird taste, but... Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't think I've... I don't think that's something you ever find in bourbon. Really. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that one also just smells so much more full. Oh, 100%. This one smells just kind of light and airy, and there's not a whole lot there. It's kind, yeah. of, kind of ethereal. Wow. Ethereal. Someone really liked English class. Yeah, I know I did. Man, it's funny because my AP English teacher was such a dick. But I loved his class. It's a fantastic class. I once called him a prick to his face. <laughs> Did you know my senior year, English was the only non-honors or AP class I took? Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. I took two AP maths and two AP sciences at honors level Spanish. <laughs> and I was like, sign me up for regular senior <laughs> seminar. I have no interest in uh, taking AP English. Which is funny because you read so much. Yeah. I don't like when people like try to force ideas about reading on me. But, well, that's fair. It sounds like... It sounds like you've had some kind of shitty English teachers. I've had some decent English teachers. I just did not like English in high school. Also, my favorite thing about uh, English in high school, my, or at least my senior year, is we had to read the book Rocket Boys, which is the basis for the movie October Sky. Mm. I did not read the book. I did not watch the movie. I had a friend watch the movie and tell me about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I got three out of 10 on the quiz. <laughs> It's almost like you put absolutely no effort and into I it. And I still graduated in the top 20%. Oh. <laughs> so it sounds like I didn't need English class. <laughs> oh, my God. No, that sounds about right. Yeah. When I was taking AP English, I also took, like, the lesser, like, 
the English for dumb kids at the same time because I really love English. Two English classes because I really love English. I uh, really love English. Marry it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, then I'd be cheating. Eh. <laughs> Anywho, but yeah, no, I totally took a second English class and like I got an I, I had an A plus in that class. No. Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, for one of the papers, I just decided, fuck it. I'm just gonna just, I'm, I'm gonna per- turn in a piece of trash. So we had to write a book about, or an essay about Herman Hesse's uh, Siddhartha. Hated that book. Oh, it's such bullshit. Yeah. That and, what was it, Catcher in the Rye? Oh, I hated Catcher in the Rye. Fuck Holden Caulfield. Wait, you read Catcher in the Rye? No, I read the excerpts <laughs> of Catcher in the Rye. I did not fucking read Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> Um, <sighs> anyway, but yeah, no, Herman Hesse Siddhartha, I turned in a, a, a paper that was literally just, I wrote a bunch of memes into it. Like I, I wrote the lyrics to Rick, Rick Astley's, uh, never going to give you up into it. I just wrote a, just a bunch of trash and I still got an A in the class. <laughs> I did not give a shit at that point. You're watching a stream with two achievers here. Yeah. We've both accomplished great things mm-hmm. in a uh, slacking off in English class. Okay, small batch, way better than sweet wheat. Yes, that that's that is really is not a fight on this one. No. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's the thing though. Like people like weeded whiskeys because they're easier going. But this is too easy. Like I've had weeded like like Bernheim. Is that how you pronounce it? Bernheim, that's a that's a full wheat whiskey too. Yeah, that's a good wheat whiskey though. Yeah, like, there's more complexity in it. It just tastes, it tastes like a watered down something. Like it tastes like a watered down version of Bernheim. I feel like that. Yes. Yeah. But then Bernheim's still better. Like we could water down Bernheim right now, and it would still be better. It'd still be it's better like, than yeah. sweet wheat. That's fair. That's fair. Graham Thurston, he thought this was a whiskey stream. What the fuck with the education shit? <laughs> Dude, we're telling you how to skip out on education. Have you ever been in a rot cut stream? This literally, this literally just becomes us <laughs> ranting about shit. Yeah, but this has been an educational rant. I I, I understand you're feeling deceived. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, let's talk about the pros and cons of charter schools. Who? that's deep. <laughs> Let's get really niche about it and talk about it specifically on the ramifications of a very uh, segregated city like Milwaukee. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. We're let's, not doing that. Let's talk race politics in Milwaukee. I'm sure we wouldn't piss anybody <laughs> off. It is a rough city to yeah. live in. It's way less segregated than when we were kids. Is it? Yeah. We were no longer the number one segregated city in the United States. So. Are we like number two? I think we're in the top 30. Okay. So we 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 went down quite a bit. That's good. Yeah. 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 So we're still not, very bad here. It's not great. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Charles Ashworth is in, and my whiskey. In. What is everybody drinking? Please tell us what you're drinking. We would love to know. Yes. Because Hopefully, it's better than the sweet wheat. Yeah, I'm disappointed with the sweet. I'm very wheat. disappointed. In yeah, it. it's not great. Yeah, but they're getting better as we go along, based on the first two. So maybe like foolproof will be. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we should, we should also talk about this. Okay, so so small batch is like the most most findable, affordable one. Sweet wheat is actually somewhat difficult to find. Good. Yeah, it's not actually that easy. Um, and then, then the bottled and bond, relatively common, but uh, still, like, it's bottled and bond, so it's more expensive. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, what, this one was 30, 40, 50... And this one, I think, was just under 60 for me. Well, retail. I didn't pay that. Um, There's a lot of money on this table. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but Foolproof is actually the one that just won Jim Murray's World Whiskey of the Year for 2020. Who's Jim Murray? Jim Murray. Jim Murray is Sorry, this... the way you turned your head made it seem like that was a setup. I genuinely don't know who Jim Murray is. <laughs> Oh wait! Before before we uh before we do it, we've got Evan Williams single barrel, uh for Andrew Spurrell. Charles Ashworth is on the milk. I respect that. I'm a I'm a big milk lover. Trevor Magnus Booker's oh, the 2016 06 the No Hard Times. 
My favorite bookers? <gasps> I love you. That's like the most excited I think I've ever heard you about anything. No, that's great. I'm, that's fantastic. All right. Um, and then Graham Thurston's on the Abelur, Abelur Ebuna. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Oh, and I forgot to mention that Jeremy Sims is in the chat, so that's that's cool. Uh, anywho. Um, yeah, but anyway, Jim Murray. Jim Murray is like the closest thing to a whiskey hobgoblin in existence today. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that I'm pretty sure he literally is the Hobgoblin from Spider-Man, except that he drinks whiskey. <laughs> what does that mean? It looks like, okay, you, like literally take take the face of the Hobgoblin from Spider-Man okay. and mix it with Chris Jericho's dress style and like give him white hair. And that's Jim Murray. The problem is I have very loose, loose knowledge about all of those things. <laughs> And also, like, when you say Hobgoblin, I'm very specifically only thinking about James Franco and Spider-Man Okay, right? no, 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 not that Hobgoblin. I'm okay. talking classic Hobgoblin with, like, the white mask and the orange hood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the Hobgoblin I'm talking about. Okay. I'm sure he's probably a very nice guy, but every year he releases, like, his whiskey Bible, uh -huh. where basically he goes around and he tastes, like, 1,200 whiskeys a year, and he goes to all his distilleries and, like, tells them what they ought to be doing with their whiskey and stuff. Okay. And he, he goes like this. He doesn't. Okay. I'm just, I'm just doing this for some reason. Um, but he actually does have a very funny way of drinking. Like he, I'm, 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 I'm. it's very, it's very interesting. To that watch. made me very uncomfortable. You like that? No. I'm, 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 stop. I'm, 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 I'm. I hate everything about it. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So basically, Willard Dafoe. Willard Dafoe. Um, Fun fact, he did not know Willem Dafoe was named Willem Dafoe until like last year. I definitely thought it was pronounced William. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how. You know, he mispronounced his own name once on, on camera. I'm not surprised. He called himself William. <laughs> yeah, for everyone who thinks his name is William, it's not. <laughs> anyway, uh... Richard Moore says Jim Murray is not a very nice guy. I don't know. I've never met the man. But the point being, he's he's a little bit of an oddity in the whiskey world. Okay. Is he is a hobgoblin. Not to be insulting or anything. Um, <laughs> but he uh every year he comes out with his his world whiskey bible whiskey thing. And he rates like all the whiskeys from that year. Okay. And this year, and he always chooses the World Whiskey of the Year. And this year, he chose 1792 Full Proof. Hmm. The thing is with Jim Murray is that people always wonder how much of his opinions are actually his opinions, and how much, how often he's just effing with us and like trying to make a political statement. Because yeah. one year he chose Crown, Crown Royal uh, Northern Harvest, which is a good whiskey, which is a good whiskey, and but people, all these people lost their goddamn minds. Um, do you think like there's some level of pretension in it or is it just, eh. it's actually just not the best thing? I think there is probably a little pretension in it. Okay. I think it was also a very specific batch of Crown Royal Northern, Northern Harvest. Okay. Honestly, we had Crown Royal, the, the Northern Harvest on the show and we loved it. Me and the old man, not her. Yeah, she obviously. Hates, she hates rye. Um, but yeah, we loved it. Okay. It wasn't the best rye I've ever had, but we loved it nonetheless. All rye's are bad. That's um, not true. Some ryes are decent. She has been choosing to drink rye recently. Two very specific ryes, and they're ryes we've already covered that I like on the show. Michter's yeah. rye, because it tastes like a bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> and Angel's Envy rye, because that uh, the rum finish makes it sweet. That's true. It really does. It dulls out, it dulls out all the bad edges of rye. Yeah. Yeah. I like those, too. Yeah. Well, I like the I like the Angel's Envy better, but you know, is it just too sweet for you? Mixers. Well, Mixers is it's not bad. It's yeah. flavorful, but it doesn't have yeah, it doesn't have those really pokey, spicy aspects. So. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Just watch us do those yeah. motions. Um. Oh, Patty, thank you for reminding people to hit the like button. Aww. Uh, Graham Thurston agrees with you. He can't like rye. Yeah. Is he a real Canadian? 
Technically, you guys only put as much rye in your whiskey as like bourbon does. So, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's too much rye here. Um, anyhow, but yeah, so Jim Murray just declared foolproof his best whiskey of the year, world whiskey. The question is one, was that do we all do, do people agree with him? Was he being serious or was he just trying to F with us and try to bring attention to the 1792 for whatever reason? Which he is wont to do. Uh, or, or, and two, does that now mean we're never going to be able to find full proof again? <laughs> because all the, all the taters are going to buy it up. Taters? Taters. Whiskey taters. It's the word for, it's the word for relatively ignorant people who just buy up everything because of its rarity. Why taters? I have no idea. Anyone know the, uh, where does, where does the term taters come from? I have no idea. Is it because they're potatoes? We are all potatoes. I wish. That's why, I, that's why I'm so edible. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, Charles Ashworth is asking, have I tried Balcones rye? Yes. I've had the regular rye and the cast strength, and both are amazing. Cast both strength. are too rye. Cast strength is fantastic. Too rye. It tastes like, it tastes like, um, tastes like rye. No, it tastes like, like steroids. It tastes like espresso. If you dipped a Mexican lollipop in espresso, like with all that chili. In added pickle. I don't get pickle, but. I do. I'll always find it. You can smell pickle from three miles away. Yeah. 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 When we first moved in together, I told Ed that if he wanted to have pickles, he had to do them in a room I was not in. That mm -hmm. we've been living together for almost two years and it's still been happening. <laughs> Yeah. I will not edge up on that rule. It's a fair rule. Yeah. That's a fair rule. Yeah. See, there's nothing I don't, there's no food that is as equivalently abhorrent to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I get to just skate by and do nothing. Yeah. 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 Try some of this bottle of bond. Okay. See what you think of that. So now this, this particular bottle of bond is a single barrel pick. So bottle and bond, one distilling season. Uh, half the year is one distilling season. Half the year is the other distilling season. I like this. Uh, this is 50% alcohol, 100 proof, aged at least four years, and stored in a bonded warehouse. This is sweet. I like it. Yeah? yeah. You think it's sweeter than the small batch? I'll have to taste the small batch again. It might be different gonna, types of sweetness. We're going to have to pour a little more small okay. batch. I was kind of worried about this because it smells a little hot. It could have also just been the way I inhaled. It is a little hotter than the small batch. Yeah. Like, it's, it's slightly stronger, so, like, that makes sense. What is the bottle and bond proof? Uh, 50%. Okay. All bottled and bond has to be 50%. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. Look at that. Education. Edumacation. We're here to get you smarts. I speaks pretty. It's all them English classes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Graham Thurston's asked me if I've never heard that before. Is it all in my mind? I'm pretty sure all of you are, are just in my mind. I am all that has existed or will ever exist. Okay. We are all Edward. Oh, sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. I will say this one has more of that like kind of charred oaky, not quite sour, but kind of kind of that that tannic charred oaky note. Like sappy. Not quite sappy. I wouldn't say sappy, but just like, like, I don't know. It's like, that one's more like chewing like on tree. the tree. Yeah. That one's more like chewing on the barrel itself. Yeah. This one is, yeah, a little bit sweeter, a little bit more brown sugary. I feel like the emphasis is more on the corn here versus the emphasis is more on the barrel here. Yeah. Which is odd because we don't know how old these are. These could be the same age. True. Yeah. Yeah. The magic of whiskey. I guess my thing is like, I wonder if, I feel like this one just took on a lot of those barrel characteristics, whereas this one, those barrel characteristics merged more with the corn a little bit and okay. kind of started creating more of those brown sugary nice notes. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a thing. Like you can't, a good whiskey doesn't just take on barrel flavor. Yeah. Like they gotta, it gotta, they kind of mix together and make new things. You are so odd. 
Yes, master. I am Igor. Okay. <laughs> Uh, um, Trevor Magnus prefers the Wild Turkey 101 as a daily, as a high rubber. That's fair. That's fair. I love, I love Wild Turkey. Ain't nothing wrong with no Wild Turkey. Yeah, I like. Let's see. Both of these are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Both the small match and the bottle and bottle are pretty dang good. If you had to pick one over the other. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's hard to choose. One more. Okay, all right, one more sip. Hold okay. on, hold on. I'm going to drink this. Let me get a drink of water. No, I don't, I don't like making choices. Oh, they're both equally... They're both... I feel like they're both equally good... But I might go with the small batch. Hmm. Just because it has a little bit more of a dark fruit note. Okay. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little it's bit. It's that artificial grape candy flavor. Yeah. Yeah. It's that it's that grape laffy taffy flavor. It's kind of fun. You don't really get that in a lot of a lot of whiskeys. No. I kind of dig it. Charles Ashworth says he he gets to be the uh, little voice in my head that encourages me to do stupid things. Charles, you don't Stop understand. It. All the voices in my head tell me to do stupid things. There's You're not a, a special voice. <laughs> There's like one tiny voice that's like, no, no, don't, don't do it. It's me. Don't do it. <laughs> I was wondering where that was coming from. <laughs> uh, <sighs> you are a character I'm a person. who I choose to spend time with. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we... Should we get into this? Let's I don't do know. It. I mean, should we spend some more time with this? Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to go back to the sweet wheat real quick. Okay. It's still disappointing. It's, now it smells like brown sugar and uh, oatmeal. Like coming off the, the bottled and bond. It just smells like oatmeal. I can get the oatmeal, but it smells, I don't get the brown sugar. It smells like unflavored oatmeal. Mm, just like mush. So, yeah, just oats. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a stash of sugar, but not enough to make oatmeal good. Yeah, no, whenever I would eat oatmeal as a kid, I had to put gobs of brown sugar on it. So much. So much sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever have the dinosaur eggs uh, oatmeal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Where you boil them and they'd, like, they'd hatch? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of remember throwing a tantrum when my mom brought home the not dinosaur eggs <laughs> what is this boring oatmeal i'm sad <laughs> my oats aren't colorful oh man i want i don't know i feel like i probably ate one of those eggs without boiling it mm. i'm like 95 percent sure i would just i'm sure every out. kid did yeah yeah like you open the pack and you're like wonder what this tastes like right yeah but yeah. also, you're weird and eat uncooked spaghetti. Okay, is that okay? Real quick, stream stream opinion: Is it weird to eat uncooked spaghetti? I'm not just saying you eat like handfuls of it instead of a meal. I'm saying like, well, you're making some spaghetti. You're you're waiting for the water to boil. You got some noodles, and you're like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a little bite out of a couple of out of a couple of spaghetti noodles. I'm gonna eat a little spaghetti while I'm waiting to make my spaghetti. That, Sound off in the chat. Let us know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's that weird. Wait, hold on. Charles Ashford just says I ate bark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good on you. Steve A says yes, it's weird. Okay, that's fair. Um. Okay, Jeremy Sims says nothing wrong with raw pasta. Andrew Sparrow says he's done it. Uh, Richard Moore says yes, so weird. So it sounds like we're pretty split. And well, but pretty split isn't bad, considering that you seem to think it was the most abhorrent thing in the world. It's not the most abhorrent thing you've done, but it's I don't care for it. What is the most abhorrent thing I've done? Anytime you make grilled cheese and put pickles in it. Oh. And then, like, try to be near me. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Magnus is asking, do you think they proofed down uh, the sweet wheat too much, hiding its true flavor? Do you think that could be what it is? Maybe. Yeah, it's... Oh, okay, so it's... it's 45.6. 45.6. That's not a bad proof. Like, all told. Yeah. 91.2 proof, 45.6 percent alcohol by volume. Just right, so right. yeah, sorry. 40, you know what we meant, right? Yes. I hope you did. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I feel like I've had things not as strong proof-wise that yeah. still have more flavor. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. So it's like how, I don't know. So what is it like? I feel like that's the thing for me. What I like about 1792 is that obviously it's got the corn undertones, but that rye, the rye in there kind of props everything up. It pushes it. It gives it a nice little push. I won't hear this pro rye. Okay, propaganda. but here's the thing. Like you like these, even though they've got rye in them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like you hate them. Yeah. I feel like I feel like maybe, maybe without the rye, this comes across as just too grainy. It's just not that there's not there's not but again, something like, really cool in there. There's wheat bourbons that don't do, they have better. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta, they get like that sweet bread kind of characteristic versus this is just that's a good point yeah there's no bready characteristic yeah maybe that's why it's so disappointing yeah what i wonder why that is though yeah like what would make it so that you don't get like that sweet bready yeah that's a good point i'm just here to drink because you think like okay you think about like an older weeded whiskey yeah. which we've had a few on the show it does they do tend to have a lot more barrel influence which kind of balances out the not having the rye spice yeah but even a younger one does at least have kind of that yeah like an underlying bready grainy sweetness yeah and this one doesn't seem to have it random question do we still have old elk uh rye bourbon the rye based bourbon yeah yeah it's in here which the sour wait the sour mash or the standard bottling the standard yeah, that's that's a okay. one. Good yeah. to know. Okay. Did you want to compare it? Or? No, I was just curious. I might drink that later. Okay. Also, I'm impressed we have not opened any of these old elk. I know. We've been sitting down for a while. Yeah, a lot of our Colorado stuff. Yeah. All right, let's break out the foolproof. All right. We've been we've been jabber jawing too long. Too long. Hey, do you guys remember jabber jaw? Me and my friends get no respect. What does like Scooby do that we neglect? Yeah, that was the shark. The shark on the guitar? The shark with the... Well, I don't think he... Did he play guitar? I thought he sang. Time to look up Jabberjaw. Uh. Yeah. Um, Charles Ashby says he also drinks water directly from streams. Well, that's just the easiest way to do it. I don't have a problem with that. I've done that. Yeah. Um... Jeremy Stream says maybe it's flat because this is the stream water post barrel house collapse. <laughs> hey, Floyd's in. Good to see you, buddy. Um, feel like it's a. I don't know. Has it been a minute since you've been on the stream? I don't know. Do you want to hear something very stressful? So Jabberjaw, the show, came out in 1976. And it's supposed to be a futuristic show. Okay. It's set in 2021. Oh. <laughs> Oh man. I don't like feeling old. <laughs> we are living in in the time of Jabberjaw. This is a momentous, a momentous time to be alive, you guys. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh yeah, but Jeremy Jeremy brings up a good point that they they did have their barrel house collapse. What was that? 1792. 1792. <laughs> A lot of things happened in 1792. Yeah. No, it was 2018. They killed like a thousand fish because all the runoff. But they died rocking out. Yeah. This is was... rock out. Sorry. Mm. I did this. This could be too. This is like what? This like, is like. Hang. Hang ton, dude. Mm. Gnarly. Gnarly, bro. Yeah. Um. And Blade Runner. Yeah, Blade Runner. Hey, Alan from Whiskey Friend is in. Good to see you, buddy. Um, 
Richard Moore says he picked up the full proof last week and he loves it. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully we do too. I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Let's, okay. Let's get okay, into it. No it. more. No more waiting. Yes. No more waiting around. Also, somebody I can't remember who. Somebody said Jabberjaw probably played drums. I think that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. I no, got distracted right. by the fact that the show takes place in 2021. Yeah, right. He definitely did play drums. Yeah. Okay. Get away for this. Am I going to be excited for it? I th I think you might be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna taste it. Do it. And this is what I came here for. <laughs> this is delightful. I this think, is the sweetness of bur what bourbon should be. Yeah, yeah. I think, do you feel like Jim Murray might have been on the on target on this one? Uh, well, it's not the best bourbon I've had. Fair enough. But like, okay, is his thing based on like things that specifically come out that year? Or like... See, but his thing is, he he tastes through... It's just whatever he tastes in a year. I think it's whatever he tastes in a year. Someone can, can correct me if I'm wrong, because I might be wrong. Okay. Uh, hey, Trev Wilson's in. Good to see you. Hola. Small batch bass. <laughs> German captain. Yeah. That actually would be interesting. Like, if they get drunk on highly alcoholized river water... When you catch them and you eat them, would that still be in their system? Maybe because it's like they're gonna die before they can actually process all that all that alcohol. Yeah, is it gonna be in their muscle or flesh? Do you like the term flesh? Yes, flesh. I hate it when you do it that way. Skin hunger. I hate that. And we've been <laughs> over it. No, this this smells really really good. It tastes really good. Do you okay. taste it yet? I burped. I'm sorry. That is not the most embarrassing thing that's happened on this show. I know it's not. <laughs> like, after I apologized, I was like, I don't think they think I'm some, like, prim and proper lady who doesn't burp. <laughs> that is really good. Yeah. That is really good. I enjoy that immensely. That first, the first whiff I got off of it was all, like, boiled plum and dark cherry, like, dark sour cherry and... Like, it's all fruit. And then you let it sit in your mouth for a little while. And then all that, like that, then you get some spice. Then you get some pepper, some clove. Like, and it, it works, it, it, it pulls, it get, like, it works well. Yeah. It's not disjointed. It's, it smoothly goes through its transition. I don't get dark fruit up front. I get the more bready stuff up. Like, it kind of tastes like a... Like a spicy pound cake. Like I get the clove part, mm. but then it's clove mixed with sugar. It tastes a little bit like Christmas. Oh. Which is something I didn't think I would say because I'm not a person who really likes Christmas. You love Christmas. You Everyone's love Christmas. Everyone secretly loves Christmas. You love Christmas and want me to love it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Because yeah. Christmas is great. Um... Wagda LW says they had 1792 BIB for 34 and my total wine in the glass case limit one. Ooh, yeah, that's a I deal. Mean, $34 is a good deal. Yeah. That's a, that actually is a good deal, I would say. Um, interesting that they had it in the glass case, though. So, though, to be fair, for my liquor store, when we did ours, we did give, uh, like, our email club the first, first dibs at this. Um, just because, like, I'm wondering, okay, so this is a Sazerac brand, right? Okay. Same people who own the Weller, Pappy, yeah. all that Buffalo Trace stuff. I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing a same, the same thing where it like 1792 is the new rare luxury brand and they're going to start releasing more and more luxury stuff and it's going to be super rare and everyone's going to want to buy up all the stuff. Is that how you think ads work? It's just people going like this a bunch? Yeah. Come by 1792. Let me rub my pectoral muscles on you. I live with this. <laughs> I think everyone wants wants me to come rub my pectoral muscles on them. I think everyone, everyone, that's a dream. That's a dream for the American populace. If any of you want to take Eddie for a week and I can just uh, <laughs> live a normal life, let me know. Um, Trevor Magnus is asking, does 1792 have a barrel proof or just the full proof? Yes. Good question. No barrel proof. Huh. It, they, they do just have the full proof. 
which is kind of a cop out to be fair because they're like why is it a cop out well because it's like they put they 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 release this full group it's very good i think we both enjoy this one i I think think, like just off the bat it's way better than both of these than the small batch and the bottled and bond yeah but that said it's kind of a cop out because they're like we're gonna we're gonna prove this down to sixty two point five, which is basically where it went into the barrel. That's the upper limit of where you can put something into the barrel. Um, instead of actually releasing something straight out of the cask, which I don't know, is it is it semantic to fight like fight full proof versus barrel proof? Kind of, I guess, because it's kind of like is is it a few degrees of proof really going to make that much of a difference? It can. It well, that yes, it can. Yeah. It can first of all, but at the same time, like it also just feels kind of like a kind of like they're just doing it because they didn't want to like have to deal with relabeling their bottles every time. <laughs> like it feels like they just decided on a proof and they're like, we're going to water it down to that every time, just so we don't have to worry about having different proofs and different labels for for every every time we want to release a batch. Good call. But doesn't that doesn't that kind of irk you a little bit? Eh. Like don't you want don't you want them to release the most like natural product possible? Eh. <laughs> I feel like random things bother you. also I'm pulling on my sock in case anybody's wondering why I leaned over so much. Um Random things irritate me. That's not something that does. Mm. <clears throat> what what does irritate you? Oh, lots of things. But specifically about whiskey. Uh, when we plan a theme night and you try to introduce things <laughs> that aren't in the whiskey theme. <laughs> Call back to earlier in the stream for all two of you who were here in yeah. the beginning. Yeah, that yeah. was uh, that was a thing. Yeah. Um, what else irritates me? When people start Christmas too soon. <laughs> Christmas is all the time now. No, also I'm gonna call attention to Brad Leclerc's comic that uh where is it? Xmas starts on Xmas Eve and ends the noon of Xmas. Everything else is needless fluff. If only the rest of the world was as brave as you, Brad Leclerc, I wish. Man, that's no fun. Yes, it I is. I want a full Christmas season. I am not gonna stop singing silver bells until my my voice goes completely hoarse. Good. <laughs> and I won't have to listen to you. Yeah, I'm glad you know the uh <laughs> German Compton said pickles. Yeah, pickles are something that irritate me. Uh, that's fair. Mayo, that's another thing he can't eat around me. Oh yeah, she hates mayo. It's disgusting. It's just eggs and fat. Like those are two delicious things. No. <laughs> No. Eggs and fat are both delicious. Why wouldn't they be delicious if you put them together? There's also like olive oil involved in... Yeah, which is a kind of fat. Please stop. Mayo's gross. <laughs> Mayo, so you know like those list of things millennials are killing? Mayo's one of them. Is it? And thank God, I hope that we live in a world where mayo is hated by uh, future generations. I mean, that's people's choice. I'm not, I'm not going to say one way or the other. I'm going to keep eating it. There's nothing not in that, front of me. You won't. There's nothing that goes better with Braunschweiger than mayo, except for what? except for like mustard. Braunschweiger, like uh, liverwurst. Okay, I don't eat that. So, and you call yourself a Milwaukeean? There's some race commentary over there. <laughs> no, that is a very white Milwaukeean. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> that definitely is. <laughs> um. Somebody asked, what about garlic mayo? Also bad. Um, someone was asking about single barrel. Um, actually, we do have single barrel around us. I think it runs 45 I, which is actually about the price to pay for this. You said around here. I thought you meant in the apartment. No, not, a, not okay. in the apartment. Because this is actually single barrel bottled in bond, so it's both. Okay. Um, which is a little different because their single barrel is usually a single barrel of small batch. Again, only difference is one distilling season versus one barrel. Mm. So, I mean, is it really all that much different? Semantics. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it could technically be different because, and this this is something they can do, if they really want to make a single barrel version out of multiple different barrels, they can do that. 
like legally, like Mictor said it has been getting away with that for years. Yeah, they have. Like like taking a bunch of their rye from like blending it and then putting it in a single barrel and selling it a single barrel. Like mm -hmm. as long as you only use a new cask, that's technically allowed under the TTB. Yeah. Um, Charles Ed, uh, Ashworth asked, is that a bottle of Bastille? Yes, there's a bottle of Bastille back here. Yeah. We got that on closeout over at the store. It's it's pretty fantastic. Like the whiskey's fine. The price is so good. I could drink nothing but that for the rest of my life and I would save so much money. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> uh, YALW says for about 40. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah. Um that is the Bastille blended though. I haven't I haven't gotten to try the single malt Bastille. So I'm interested in that. Um, I came back to the sweet wheat to see if I would like it more. Still very flat. I feel like there's no way it's gonna stand up, especially after the full proof. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Should we run down the line? Let's just see. Let's just see if these others stand up at all. This was nice. This smells more cotton candy, you know. Okay. If this doesn't have those deep, dark, fruity notes. Yeah, that one tastes like a lighter, much lighter version of the full proof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the bottle in Bond tastes like full proof. But you it, slap down some of the edges. Right, right. You but like the good edges. The good edges. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of crippled it a bit. Um, And then small batch. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I still really love that Laffy Taffy taste. That's fair. Yeah. I like the corn taste. Yeah, fair enough. That's what I love about bourbon. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, Charles Asher says we mix them together. Good call. Okay. Should I re-pour some sweet wheat? Or... Re-pour some sweet wheat and we'll okay. mix it in. We're doing science now, kids. Science. So basically this has just become like a slightly, slightly weeded mash bill. Yeah. We're basically making a four grain whiskey. I'm not putting too much sweet wheat in. That's fair. Excellent. Um, yeah, Richard Moore, I agree. It's very good. Now, here's, here's the thing, though. Of the bourbons we've had this well, of the whiskeys we've had this year, mm -hmm. I don't think, I mean, I don't think that's my favorite. No. But of the bourbons, how does it stack up? Specifically new bourbons? Just bourbons we've had in the last year. Let's let's do the Jim Murray thing. Like bourbons we've had in the last year. How does how's full proof stack up? That's really hard. We went to Colorado this year. I know. I know. I know so, it's kind of hard to remember everything we've done. But I'm saying no, it doesn't stand up. Oh no, it doesn't stand up. Okay. To a lot of the Colorado things we had this that's year. That's fair. And that's me just saying Colorado. Like there's other stuff we had this year too. Like, yeah, which which Colorado ones do you think? Anything from Old Elk. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, you do love Old Elk. And I liked a lot of the Breckenridge stuff. Breckenridge, good. I feel like we do. My favorite Breckenridge is still the PX cask. That's a that's little it. bit different. Yeah. I feel like you can't quite judge that against this. That's fair. Yeah. It's a very different flavor profile. Exactly. Um, but yeah. yeah it's, I don't know what my favorite thing this year has been. Yeah. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to do a video like of our favorite whiskeys for the year. Yeah. I was going to ask, I was going through your old videos and I saw there was the um, Worst Whiskies of 2018. Are you going to do a Worst Whiskies of 2019? Oh, of course we are. Okay, that makes sense. Heck yeah, we are. Oh, also, I forgot. I need to announce our advent calendar for the year. So you guys are going to be the first ones to hear about it. I'll make another video just explaining it and for everyone else who missed the live stream because people don't rewatch this. It's way too long. Um, but so I was going to do Secret Spirits this year. Okay. I decided not to. Secret Spirits is great. Don't get me wrong. They actually offered to sponsor the show. But the, the old man was against it. The old man says we shouldn't accept any sponsorships, which I, I want to be a sellout. We don't want to sell out. I kind of get it. Yeah. I kind of get it. Um, however, we are going to do an advent calendar, but it's going to be a rot gut style advent calendar. Uh oh, what? Oh, <laughs> Jeremy Sims comment: Twelve rock guts of Passover. I mean, pass out. <laughs> pass out. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's good. Um, yeah. So Floyd, you you guessed it. We are doing a month of 
bad whiskey. Well, to be fair, it's only whiskey I could get in a 50 milliliter shooter from my liquor store. So there's going to be a couple of decent ones in there, but it's mostly going to be bad. I made sure to choose stuff that was specifically flavored or really low end. Um, but what we're going to do, what we're going to do is Erica, I've got a bag of them. Well, oh, okay. I was going to uh, ask how am I involved in this bad whiskey thing? <laughs> Um, we're going to have the, yeah, we're going to have a bag of them. We're going to choose, Eric is going to choose one for each day and I'm going to do it blind and see if I can guess which rock gut whiskey it is. So tune in, tune in. <laughs> um, yeah, actually. So I see someone mentioned wild W just mentioned uh, harbinger. I still like Harbinger better than this. I don't know if I've had Harbinger. Sure you have. Haven't you? The Texas one? This one? Uh, oh, Iron Root. Okay, Iron, yeah. yeah, Iron Root Harbinger? Yeah. Yeah. I had that. This is my baby. Okay. I raise it as my own. Did you birth it? Yeah. This is my whiskey butt baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every live stream is just going to chart the end of our relationship. <laughs> you know that happened to Food Quig? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a nice guy. I really like him. And, and I, the first time I talked to him, I was like, hey, aren't you? Didn't that, didn't that happen to you? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. Some troll found that and started sharing it around. <laughs> when you first started this channel... A friend of mine pointed out, she's like, yeah, there's some whiskey YouTuber who like his girlfriend just packed up and left him in the mid middle of the video. And that's going to be, you're like, I know that guy. <laughs> Shout out to Food Quick. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing what you do. He he always pops onto these videos and, and leaves a comment. So we appreciate you. We love Quig. you, Food Quick. Yes. Um, but yeah. Okay. What do we think of this? What do we think of this blend real quick? Huh, it's weird. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah, we have the cast strength harbinger. Yeah, that's that's the one we have, not the XC. That is the way to go for sure. It's good. It's good shit. I don't know. It's not bad. It's not great. It tastes muted, but not as muted as sweet wheat. So I'm curious if like the sweet wheat, the very little we poured in kind of dulled it down or if just like everything's not going to compare to full proof. Yeah. I feel like once you go with, once you go full proof, you can't go back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, it's black too. You, once you go black, you can't go back. Wow. Is that racist? Little. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> um, I'm trying to think of something that rhymes with proof. Once you go proof, you're... Once you go full proof. Yeah. English class. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> we are not clever people. Well, I, I like to think of myself as kind of a, a manic, a manic animal intelligence. Who describes themselves this way? <laughs> I do. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go run around the woods and roll in something dead, just like a fox would do. <laughs> Guys, I think I gave Erica an aneurysm. <laughs> you stress me out, but I love you. I love you too. Okay, so we are, uh, I think we should finish this up, hey? Okay. It's almost been an hour. Yeah. I think the the general decision was that full proof is fantastic. Yes. Bottled and bond is very good. Yes. Small batch is pretty good. Sweet wheat disappointing. is very disappointing. Yes. That's too bad. But maybe we should have like a uh, wheat whiskey. A wheat whiskey night. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fun. Because they're good wheat whiskey. Yeah. 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 Marshall, wait, which one is it down? Banner, not Marshall. Banner down Texas. Great wheat whiskey. Yeah. Too bad we can't get it up here. Eh. Anywho, I'm going to call it a night. We're going to call it a night. But what you guys need to do is you guys got to run over to my whiskey den because we're going to have another Dungeons and Drams. I'm DMing. It's going to be fun. So make sure you do it. 
Anyway. I'm laughing at a comment uh, for Mike Stillwell as Mike and Ed, the father son duo. It says, bring it back to whiskey. This is Mike. Oh my God. <laughs> Mom, you don't want to watch these. You're going to be disappointed in me. <laughs> as I am. <laughs> YLW says junkies time. Yeah, go watch the junkies. They're probably more entertaining than our than our D&D podcast. But you should still check out the D&D podcast after you're done watching the junkies. Yes. So go do that. So yeah, my whiskey den. Go check it. Go check it out. Anywho, we're going to call it a night. This has been our 1792 night. It was fun. Thanks, Thanks for watching. Be Thank sure you. to like. Yeah. Hit that like button on your way out. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yes. And until next time. Mom says too much swearing. <laughs> Have a good night, all. Love you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>